what's up guys and welcome to the channel today my name is Priscilla and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make a box pleated circle skirt pattern so I remember making a circle skirt pattern not too long ago in the past and you guys really really wanted to see how I could sort of develop or modify that basic circle skirt pattern into a box pleated skirt so the method I'm using in this video is called the slash and spread method and it's something that you can apply to sleeves to add volume to trousers to skirts to dresses and I wasn't very fond of this pattern in uni but once you really get a grasp of it it's not that complicated to use so if you'd like to see how to make this pattern keep on watching but first first oh my god guys you reach 10k like <sighs> oh like seriously there's nothing more beautiful than having people that appreciate and are inspired by your work no matter how small or no matter how big like i really feel very grateful my parents always taught me to say thank you for anything people do for me so i'm very very grateful for all 10k plus of you i hope we continue to grow i hope i continue to inspire you with my work and if you haven't joined the family already like shall we just People, shall we just wait for all those that have not joined the DIY fam already? The subscribe button is right there. You cannot miss it. Make sure you subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up if you'd like to see more pattern and sewing tutorials. And without further ado, let's jump straight into this video. Alright, let's get started. So these are the tools that I will be using. I have already done a pattern tutorial on how to create a full circle skirt. I'm going to link that in the description box down below and it's relatively easy to do so don't worry. And I did this to my size so feel free to create yours to your size or to whatever size that you want to. I also got myself some extra pattern paper because we'll be needing it. I also have my rulers, the straight and the curved one. I got some tape measure, some scissors tape seller tape sharpener pencil pen eraser you know all that good stuff that you would need to make a good pattern so the first thing you want to do is to divide your circle i have gone ahead and i've marked where i want my center front and my center back to be because i want to keep that center back open for a zip later on but the center front we are going to be slashing so my waist sort of circumference is 30 inches or 76 centimeters and i want to create a total of seven pleats so the number of pleats you'd want to create is what you would use to divide your waist measurements and that would sort of help you know how far apart your lines should be so this is something i made up and i stand corrected but it worked for me so from the center front line to this line i'm about to mark is 11 centimeters and i'm just going ahead to draw a line that is straight from the waist all the way to the hem i'm going to repeat that all the way around until i get back to my center front line so i ended up having a total of seven lines and eight panels So I'm just going ahead to number each panel because there are two methods to do this slash and spread. For the sake of this video, I'm going to be doing it a panel at a time because I don't have a very large table to slash everything all at once. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut my first sort of opening point. I'm going to cut that center front because I would like a pleat there. If you don't want a pleat, you can avoid that point. So I'm going to cut that place completely open all the way to the end and then spread it apart. So if I had a bigger space, I'd have slashed everything, spread it apart how wide I want it to be and then layer fresh pattern paper underneath. But because I have a small table and I'm working with limited space, I'm going to do this one at a time. It's more painful, it takes more time, but it works. So I decided to open up my pleats by about 12 centimeters on the waist and 34 centimeters on the bottom. You want to make your bottom wider than the top so there's really volume and room created with your pleats. Before I secure these panels onto my fresh pattern paper, I'm just going in to double check that the measurement I want is what I have right now. Because what you want to happen is you must retain that same measurement across all the other pleats that you're going to create. 
So once you've taped down both sides of your panels, you'll, you have to create a new hem for this new panel that you've made and you want to make it a curve so, it's, so it flows nicely with the other panels of this skirt. So I'm just going into smoothing the hem as well as create a curved waistline on the top of this new panel that we have created. So once you've done this, it's basically the same thing you are going to repeat for the other sides. So once you've drawn in the waist and you've drawn in the hem, you can just shave out whatever excess that you have. And this pattern is relatively short. So if you're going to make a longer skirt, you want to make your original skirt, uh, full circle skirt pattern longer and then do this slash and spread method. So I'm going to go ahead and slash my other panels, open my panel two, three, four, up all the way to the eighth panel. So I'm just going ahead to finish off the last bit of this piece I'm doing here, just cutting off the excess from the waist. And something else I like to do is I like to turn the pattern all the way to the back, cut off any extra pattern that might be sticking out from the ends, and then secure it with even more tape. I know it just seems like a lot of taping to do, but because you're going to be sort of folding and bending this pattern a lot, you want to make sure that any piece doesn't fall off when you are working with it. So I'm just finishing off the rest of that panel and this is what all of the panels look like. So I had to move to the floor because the table was not just working anymore. The pattern was really growing in size. So this is what it looks like right now. It got really, really full and beautiful. I love to add volume to skirts, trousers, dresses, sleeves using this method. And once you really understand how the principle works, all you have to do is just have fun with it. So I'm going in here to create my pleats just to show you guys what this pattern would actually look like on the bust form before actually making it in material. I am going in and folding my pleats and the way this works is you fold half of one side of this new panel you've created inwards and do the same for the other side and I'm just securing these with a pin here so I can show you guys what everything looks like when I'm done pleating all of the different panels. So this is just an example process for you guys. If you're going to make one for yourself, you want to make a longer skirt, I, like I said before, you want to make your original pattern longer in length or when you finish making sort of a miniature one, before you cut it out, you want to make sure that you make the general length of the skirt longer else this is going to be relatively too short for you. So I'm just going in closer to show how the pleating, the box pleating actually works. So in here, I'm just pinning in that second side. But how I do this is I take that panel, I fold it in half to mark the center of that new panel we created. And then I fold in one side of that panel seven, as you can see there, secure that with a pin and folding the other side and secure it with a pin but they don't overlap. You can make yours overlap if you want, but if you make it overlap, you're going to lose some of your waist measurement. So this is what the panel looks like right now, the entire full box pleated circle skirt piece all in one. And this is a close up look of what the pleats actually look like. So if I want to cut this in material, I have to remove all these pins and spread it all out. But because I just want to show you guys what the pleats would look like, I have gone ahead and I've pleated them in and I've secured them with a pin. So the zip is going to sit on the center back, but if I don't want to zip, I can just tape that end close again and fix an elastic around the waist of the skirt. So I really love the volume that the skirt has, but if you want to create a waistband, it is relatively straightforward to do and I'm going to be showing you. To make a simple waistband, all you need to do is to create a rectangle that is the dimension of your waist by the width of whatever size you want. So I decided to go with 31 inches because I added an additional inch in case I want to fix a zip on the center back and I made it 14 cm wide meaning i'm going to cut that one piece and then fold it in half before attaching it to the waist so i'm just going ahead to draw a full-on rectangle that measures 
14 centimeters by 31 inches or 17 cm plus so i'm just going ahead to double check that that actually is what i have right now before drawing in my seam allowance so i'm drawing the seam allowance inside of the original lines i drew because i don't want to add any extra measurements to this waistband so that is a simple straight waistband done and this waistband would sit nicely on your waist because the curve of a circle skirt is going to sort of force this waistband to lay flat around your waist but if you guys would like to see me sew this skirt please give this video a thumbs up and comment below as well i've already bought the material but i don't know if i want to make the skirt or not but hey spring is here and we might as well increase our skirt collection Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this pattern tutorial. If you would like more pattern tutorials like these, please give this video a thumbs up, comment all your suggestions, questions and ideas down below and until my next video, have a beautiful morning, afternoon and evening wherever you are. Bye!